In this video, we will take a journey back in time to explore the weapons and tools used by knights during the Middle Ages. From the trusty lance to the mighty mace, and from the versatile axe to the deadly flail, we will discover the different types of weapons that were used to defend against enemies and to assert power. Get ready to learn about the evolution of medieval weapons and how they shaped the battles and skirmishes of their time. So, grab a seat and let's dive in. English medieval knights were equipped with various weapons for battle, including the long sword, wooden lance with an iron tip, metal-headed mace, battle axe, and dagger. These knights were trained from a young age and honed their skills through tournaments, allowing them to cause fatal injuries to even armored opponents. The sword held great significance for the knight, both as a symbol of the chivalric code and their noble status. The great sword, a heavy blade measuring one meter in length, required both hands to wield and remained largely unchanged in design from the 11th to 15th century. The sight of a knight on horseback brandishing a lance was already intimidating, but a dismounted knight swinging a sword capable of amputating with one strike was an even greater psychological weapon. During wartime, armies consisted of various types of knights who either fought in battle or performed guard duty in castles. The largest group was composed of household knights, who were permanently attached to a specific lord and rode with him into battle. Some knights were required to serve as a form of feudal service to a particular lord, while others were mercenary knights who fought for whoever was willing to pay them. There were also knights who were members of a specific order, such as the Templar Knights or Knight Hospitallers. A knight's arsenal of weapons was largely determined by the wealth of their lord or themselves, but this difference was often manifested in the decorative and material elements of the weapons rather than the number or quality of them. Despite these differences, certain weapons were commonly used by most knights on the medieval battlefield. The level of proficiency in weapon use among knights must have varied greatly between professional knights and those serving a fixed term. Noble males would typically receive weapons training from the age of 10, and by 14, they would become squires, or trainee knights. They practiced with various training devices, such as the quinthin, which consisted of a rotating arm with a shield on one end and a weight on the other, requiring the knight to hit the shield while riding by to avoid being hit by the swinging weight. Another device was a suspended ring that the knight had to catch and remove with the tip of their lance. Knights also trained by riding a horse at full gallop and cutting at a pell or wooden post with their sword. Although they were trained to use a bow and possibly a crossbow, they did not typically use these weapons on the battlefield, as they were deployed as part of a cavalry unit. Once a squire was fully trained, usually between the ages of 18 and 21, they could be knighted by their lord. The martial training did not end there, as a fit and capable knight who was able to move in heavy armor, cope with the limited visibility from their helmet, and effectively wield a sword or lance had a much better chance of survival on the chaotic medieval battlefield. If a knight was dismounted or disarmed, they needed to be proficient with other weapons, such as an axe, mace, or, as a last resort, a dagger. The sword held immense symbolic significance for a medieval knight. It was the weapon that was used to bestow their status as a knight during their initiation ceremony, and it was typically blessed by a priest. The design of the blade and handle was even used as a crucifix for prayer. Despite its romantic symbolism, swords made of iron and steel were deadly weapons. They were long, heavy, and sharp, capable of easily severing limbs with a single blow. Until the late 10th century, sword blades were generally lighter and shorter compared to those from the 11th century onwards. The design of the sword remained largely unchanged, with only slight variations in blade length over time. By the 13th century, the blade had shortened slightly, but by the following century, it had increased in length once again. However, despite these slight changes, Individual knights were free to choose the weapon that best suited them. The medieval longswords utilized by knights can be classified into six main types, each with its distinct variations in size, but all intended for both thrusting and cutting. First, 
double-edged and tapering to a point with a channel down the center on both sides, making it lighter. These long swords were referred to as great swords or swords of war and were mentally swung using both hands on the grip. Second, double-edged with a more pronounced taper and a channel running only three quarters of the blade length. This was the most widely used longsword up until the late 13th century. Third, a longer and wider blade that slightly widened towards the handle and had a channel running down about half the blade. The blade measured around 1 meter 40 inches and the grip averaged 15 to 23 centimeters, 6 to 9 inches. Known as the hand and a half swords or bastards, they were in use from around 1240 CE. Fourth, a short, wide-bladed sword primarily used for slashing but still with a tapering point and a channel running halfway down the blade. Fifth, a blade with a flattened diamond cross-section, pronounced taper, and point. Used from around 1280 CE, it had only a short 16 cm 4-inch grip and was designed to penetrate plate armor. These thrusting swords often had no sharpened edge near the hilt for the knight to safely grasp and increase the thrust's power. Sixth, a blade with a double channel near the hilt and then a single channel or with a raised rib, used in the 15th century. These types were produced in mainland Europe, where cities like Milan and Cologne gained a reputation for quality. Another continental innovation, the finger ring in the handle for the forefinger, was introduced and spread to England, providing a better grip. The hilts of swords were diverse, with the flat disc shape being the most common. These panels could be simple, have a race center, or even feature petals. Before the 13th century, other pommel styles included diamonds, spheres, and the cocked hat, typically seen on Viking swords. By the 14th century, the scent stopper design became popular, featuring a bulbous decorative element. The cross guards, used to protect the hand, were usually plain and sometimes curved slightly away from the handle. The handle was covered by wrapping two pieces of wood, bone, or horn around the metal tang and securing them with leather or silk cords. In the 14th century, a single piece of grip material was bored with a hole and slotted over the tang. Medieval knights sometimes added a touch of glamour to their swords by using gold or silver wire on the handle. The sword was typically stored in a leather and wooden scabbard that might have iron fittings at the top and bottom. Some swords had a small leather flap chap attached to the handle to prevent rainwater from entering the scabbard and rusting the blade. Carrying the long sword required a complex system of straps and belt, so as to prevent tripping and yet allow for quick drawing. By the 15th century, the fully diagonal sword belt was common and this was another opportunity for knights to add some shine to their attire with metal eyelets and bars. Alternatives to the long straight blade were the falcon, which had a short but wide curved blade, and sometimes one edge curved, and the other straight with a cutting edge on the outer side. These fearsome weapons, seen from the 13th century, were specially weighted with a thicker blade near the tip, making them effective at chopping off limbs, most knights also carried a dagger, which was a smaller version of the longsword, but only had one sharpened edge. By the 15th century, the two most popular types were the rondel dagger with two circles at either end of the handle and the balok dagger with two swellings between the handle and blade, both having long tapering blades. Medieval knights were known for riding horses and using the lance as a weapon to strike down opponents. Knights trained extensively in jousting and tournaments, which honed their skills for survival on the battlefield. To be successful, knights needed to have the ability to guide their horse with one hand while holding a lance and a shield, maintain balance in the saddle, aim at a moving target, and stay on their horse in the case of being hit. Lances, which were typically made of ash or cypress and ranged from 8 to 10 feet in length, had a steel tip attached to the shaft. In the 14th century, a vamplate was added to protect the hand holding the lance. The lance became thinner near the grip in the 15th century and a leather strap was sometimes worn around the upper arm to prevent the lance from sliding backwards when striking an opponent. By the end of the 14th century, knights wore a lance rest as part of their breast armor to improve the stability of the weapon. 
As armor technology advanced and became more difficult to cut with a sword, maces gained popularity. The mace's handle was made of wood and the head, initially made of copper alloy, had protrusions in the form of rounded bumps or flanges. The mace with a spiked ball was called a morning star. During the 14th century, the head was typically made of steel or iron. To prevent loss of the mace after a forceful strike, a wrist strap was attached to the base of the handle. The flail, a weapon consisting of a shaft with a metal ball attached by a chain, was developed in the 13th century but wasn't a widespread weapon on the battlefield. It has become popular among movie makers and weapons collectors. Some knights opted for the use of an axe in battle, which was typically designed with either a broad blade and an extended handle, resembling a traditional woodcutter's axe or with a thin, pointed blade and a short handle, similar to a modern firefighter's axe. In some cases, both types of axes were equipped with a spike at the bottom of the handle. During the 14th century, advancements were made such as the addition of a top spike. The same century also saw the introduction of hammers and the poleaxe, a combination of a hammer and an axe with a spike. Some poleaxes were designed with a very pointed axe blade and were known as a raven's bill. An axe with a long handle and a top spike was referred to as a halberd. Another variation of the axe was the glaive, which featured a long, slightly curved blade attached vertically to a wooden shaft and was more commonly used by infantry soldiers. In conclusion, the weapons used by medieval knights were diverse and each served a specific purpose. From the long and straight blade of the sword to the heavy and crushing blows of the mace, these weapons played a crucial role in battles and duels. The jousting lance, the flail, the axe, and other weapons were all designed to strike down opponents and keep the knight alive. Thank you for watching this video and we hope you learned something new about the fascinating world of medieval knights and their weapons. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos.